brethren, I pray you sing a new song. Sing praise in the assembly of the righteous. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let the high praise of God be on the mouths of the saints and a two-edged sword in their hands to execute vengeance on the demonic nations and punishments on those peoples to bind their kings with chains. This honor have all his saints. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Sing to him a new song. Shalom, shalom. First and foremost, we'd like to give all praises, all honor, and all glory to the Most High God, Yahweh, by Shem Mashiach Yahweh Shah. And this is uh, Brother Aharon with the Sons of Jacob. Kind, Brother Mahan. Kind. So in today's Wisdom Wisdom Wednesday, we're going to touch on a, um, a, a chapter. You know, we're going to get through and see what most of the chapter is talking about. Kind of get through that with a little couple precepts here and there. You know, we may not pull as much precepts. Throughout the whole chapter, but we're gonna give you the um, the understanding that we got on it. You know, we ain't gonna just be sitting there, you know, tearing all day. We're gonna get the understanding on it and what's actually talking about. So, can you give me Wisdom of Solomon chapter two and verse one? Kind of Wisdom of Solomon chapter two verse one. It says, "For the ungodly said, reasoning with themselves, but not aright. Our life is short and tedious." And in the death of a man, there is no remedy. Neither was there any man known to have returned from the grave. So, Khan, you, you got your precepts for that? Or you, you oh, yeah, Khan. I'm going to touch oh, yeah. on it a little bit. Yeah, go ahead. I got my precepts. Khan. So, when you're reading this chapter, you got to understand the context of it. The first scripture says, for the ungodly said, reasoning with himself. So, this whole chapter is the ungodly speaking. You know, the wicked. You know, contrary to us, the wicked, the wicked man. Right. You know, you got kind. And then it says, "Our life is short and tedious." Right. Now, um, I'm gonna grab this. This is Job 20 and verse five. Job 20 verse five. It says that the triumphing of the wicked is short, and the joy of the hypocrite before a moment. Right. So even Job, through the Spirit, he knew that um, the wicked only bear rule for a moment. Right, and when they bear rule, it tell you in Proverbs that the wicked, it's like that the people mourn when it's a wicked ruler. Right, they even tell you that in Maccabees. Right, and I got another precept, um, Revelation chapter twelve, verse twelve. Right, it says, "Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he have but a short time." Right? So these devils know that they only have a short time. Right? And it tells you right here in um, Wisdom of Solomon, it says, Our life is short and tedious, and in the death of a man, there is no remedy. Right? Because, you know, the wicked, they wasn't chosen. They don't have that understanding of what's really going on. They don't know about how um, um, Solomon actually explained how these generations of people and these souls, they actually come back on the earth. These men, they brutish. Kind. Right? They don't have, they beast. They don't have that understanding. Right? And not all men die. Kind. Right? And then it says, um, and in the death of a man, there is no remedy. Neither was there any man known to have returned from the grave. Right? But we know men who return from the grave. Kind. Right? Elijah healed a boy when he was dead. Came back to life. Came back to life. Right? Yeah, Hawasha came back to life. Rose from the rose from the grave. Healed Lazarus. Right? And tell you in Corinthians. Let's grab it real quick. First Corinthians 15. Alright, so these devils don't really know what's going on, man. That's why they don't need to be touching our book. Um. Right? Because they start saying some foolish stuff like this. Um, let's see where I want. Right. Um Man, that's a precept in Job 2. So like, yeah, it's in Psalms. Let me let me call this precept. I want you to grab. Time. So like, yeah, I got it wrote down in here in Job. It's Psalms 13 and 3. Could you grab that for me, Dr. Shah? Right, so um, Psalms 13 and 3. And I'm going to read 1 Corinthians 15. 15 verse 51. It says, Behold, 
I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Then it says, and, a, and when it says sleep, you got to understand what sleep means. Read that precept. Con, this is Psalms chapter 13 and verse 3. Consider and hear me, O Lord my God, lighten mine eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. He said, lighten my eyes, give me the understanding, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Right, that precept shows you that the word sleep in the Bible is not always talking about when you're on your bed and you're taking a nap. When you're going night night, that's not what it's talking about. It's talking about the sleep of death. God. Right, sleep is synonymous with death. Right, and on another level, sleep we understand that um, you don't have understanding. Right, so you have you need your eyes to be lightened. You need to be able to see the light. You need to be able to understand where you at and where you're going. That's what light is. It gives you the understanding. Right now, I'm gonna read this again. It says, "Behold, I'll show you a mystery." Right, so this is a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Right, and when you read this in context, you understand what change is talking about. Is going into us receiving spiritual bodies, right, and changing and changing and getting our glory. Huh. It says, "In the moment, in a moment." Watch how it describes this moment. In the twinkling of an eye. At the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. It says the dead shall be raised. Right? Them men that's in the graves, them men will be raised up. And they'll be changed. Right? So they don't understand what's going on through the scriptures. Right? These men that die martyrs for the truth, that die for the most high. It says that they're going to be raised in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, when that last trumpet sounds. This is Matthew chapter 27 and verse 51. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. And the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. So, Con, we see we see many people right here uh, rising up from the grave. You know, it's a quick little precept. Right. right. And that's why it's important for you to um, to read, man. Because you might read this and you get all confounded and, you know, forget what's going on. Right? So, through the precepts, we're showing you that um, it is accounts of people be getting raised from the dead. Right? And I could grab this one on Elijah. Um, right, all the way over in Kings, Elijah, I mean, it's like your yeah, first Kings 17 real quick. Let me grab it. Right. And you know, you can read this chapter, but to get straight to the point, um, first Kings 17 and 21, first Kings 17 and 21, it says, and he stretched himself upon the child three times and cried unto the Lord and said, Oh Lord, my God, I pray thee. Let this child's soul come into him again. And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah, and the soul of the child came into him again, and he revived. He brought a boy back to life. Right? I had a quick one. Come on. This is John chapter 11 and verse 17. It says, Then when Yahushua came, he found that he had lain in the grave four days already. So Yahushua came. And you know, came into the people of uh, Lazarus, his family and his friends, and he was in he was in the grave four days already. You know, a lot of people was losing faith because you know, it ain't never been a man just laying in the grave that long, and you know, you finna come back to life. Right. I'm gonna jump down to verse 43 to get to the point. Right. Um, it says, and when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, "Lazarus, come forth!" Salakia, Lazarus, come forth! And and he that was dead came forth bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Yahweh shall say unto them, loose him and let him go. Right. So just another quick account. You know, he brought somebody back to life after four days. That's a long time in the grave. Right. You know, that's a, that's a, that's a meaty little minute. Right. Time. But like the scriptures say, going back to this wisdom of Solomon, um, the wicked shall do wickedly, and, and none of the wicked shall understand. They ain't, they ain't gonna get what's going on. All right. That, what's that? Daniel twelve and ten. Kind. Keep reading on verse two. Bible right. It says, "For we are born at all adventure, 
and we shall be hereafter as though we had never been. For the breath in our nostril, in our nostrils is as smoke and a little spark in the moving of our heart. All right, did you have something you want to Con, 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 con. So you see how they explaining death as like a scary thing? If you're a Hebrew Israelite, you, you, you know, if you got understanding, you know that death isn't all that scary, you know? In Job, it explains death as a, us going to be at peace. Right, man, we, we, we at rest. Right, right, bro. We gotta <laughs> grab. We gotta go. I know we kind of talked about we wasn't gonna flood with so many precepts, but we gotta do it. We gotta do it. Um, let me grab that in Job first. Where is that? Come look. Oh, right here. Con, 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 con. Yeah, con. This is Job chapter three and verse. Uh, hmm, what would I start at? You can start at ten. Ten. Right. Con. It says. Because it shut not up the doors of my mother's womb, nor hid sorrow from mine eyes, why died I not from the womb? Right? He said, why died I not from the womb? Why didn't I die from the womb? Because Job, he wished that he didn't, he wasn't born at this period in time. Kind. He wished that he wasn't alive because it would be better for him not to be alive and to go through all of this. That's what he's saying. Kind. Why did I not give up the ghost when I came out of the belly? Right. Why did not Salakia? Why did the knees prevent me, or why the breast that I should suck? Right. For now, should I have lain still and been quiet? I should have slept. Then had I been at rest. All right. And he's saying I should have slept, meaning I should have just died, and I would have been at rest. Okay. Right. Let me grab a quick precept in Ecclesiastes, chapter seven. Classic precept. Right, and we got to go through the classics. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 1. It says, A good name is better than precious ointment, and the day of death than the day of one's birth. So he's saying a day of death is better than when you're born, man. And I got to grab, man, that's too many of them, though. <laughs> says, Psalms 51 and 5. Let me grab this real quick. Why is the day of death better than the day of birth? Right, this is Psalms 51, verse 5. It says, Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Right? So you all shaping up in iniquity, huh? For nine months, ten months, eight months, you shaping in iniquity. And when you're born, you're born into a world of sin. Literally, though, you know, that uh the world is given into the hands of the wicked. Huh, you know, you're born into a world of sin, like brother just said. A world of sin. You don't want to be born into this, but when you die, you leave that. Right. And you're at rest. You at rest. You finally at rest. You at peace. Right. And you still at Job. Yeah. That's more on it. Kind. Verse four Job three and fourteen. It says, With kings and counselors of the earth, which build desolate places for themselves. Right, kings and counselors of the <coughs> earth, they all go to the same place. Come on. Well, with the princes that had gold who filled their houses with silver. Right. Or as in hidden untimely birth, I had not been as infants which never saw light. Right. There, the wicked cease from troubling. It says there. And that there is talking about the spirit world. You're it there. says there, the what? The wicked cease from troubling. Right? Esau and all these other nations, they can't be wicked there. Come on. And there, the weary be at rest. Right? And the weary are at rest. And we're the ones who are weary. God. Right? But that's why it's better for you. Um, the day of death is better than the day when you're born. Right? Because when you die, you literally at rest. Right? And it's a little bit more on it, I think. Kind that's why I drop it. It says, um, there the prisoners rest together. They hear not the voice of the oppressor. Right? The prisoners is us. Kind of got right? right? And we don't got to go through that once we die. Come on. The small and great are there, and the servant is free from his master. It says the small and the great are there. And you got to understand where that there is talking about. And what else does it say? Um, right. The small and great are there, and right. the servant is free from his master. Right, and we're free from these heavy bondage, man, from this heavy yokes that we have to bear, man, when we are alive. Right, and this is a, a precept I'm going to grab in um, Sirach. You got something? Yeah. All right, Con. Sirach 41 yeah. and verse 3. Um, I'm going to start at 2. Man, um, yeah, I'll just start at, I'll get straight to the point. Sirach 41 and 3. It says, fear not the sentence of death, right? So you're not supposed to be scared of death. It says, remember them that have been before thee and that, and that, it's like, yeah, and that come after thee. For this is the sentence of the Lord over all flesh, right? That's the sentence, man. 
right? No one's, you know, everybody got to die eventually. Hey, it says remember them before thee and after thee. Right. Remember the brothers that died before you. Our brothers in here, they died righteously. Right. It ain't, it ain't, it ain't one scripture where I seen it said they died cowardly or died afraid. One brother laid over and laid on his own sword. You man, know? Uh, man, I'm Saul. Saul. Yeah, Saul. Yeah. Wicked, that's he was that's wicked. wicked. But, yeah. you know, he laid on his own sword. He wasn't like, oh, I'm scared. No. All right. <laughs> I'm gonna be at peace. I, that's that's what he was saying. It, his uh, head. Man, it's been a minute since I read Samuel, but I think it's because he knew he was gonna get it worse if he didn't kill himself. God, right? Maybe he was gonna get fucked up. Yeah, man. But but back in Wisdom of Solomon chapter two, right? Getting back the, to it. The wicked are explaining uh, death as this scary thing because they don't got the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding these scriptures. They think when you die, you done. That's right. what they push today. When you die, you done. Hey, what they say? Um, YOLO, yeah. you only live once. Yeah. Not so. Not so. <laughs> what scripture is that? Right. You know what I'm saying? We can keep reading. Verse 3. Which being extinguished, our bodies shall be turned into ashes, and our spirits shall vanish as the soft air. You see, they are so afraid. Right? It says that the spirit, it vanishes. All right. Let me grab this in Ecclesiastes, man. Man. Right, because that's not it's not how it happened. <laughs> not so. <laughs> not so, man. Not according to scriptures. Um, so like it. Where is that at? Uh, I'm gonna start at Ecclesiastes three, verse nineteen. It says, "For that which befalleth the sons of men befalleth beasts. Even one thing befalleth them." So like it. Pop up. Get. Get. So like it. Um. It says, as the one dieth, so dieth the other. Yea, they have all one breath, so that a man have no preeminence above a beast for all his vanity. Right? And here's the point. Well, before I get to the point, it's just showing you a comparison between men and beast. Right? It's telling you we got a lot of similar things. Just how you die, they die. Right? The things that you feel, they feel. It tell you that in Cyrex 40 how um, when you have a bad dream, same thing happened to a beast. You see the dog twi twitching and barking in his sleep. Same thing happened with men, right? It tells you that in Sirach, I believe, the 40th chapter. Uh, but here's the point. It says, all going to one place, all are of the dust, and all turn to dust again. Then it says, who knoweth the spirit of man that goeth upward? Right? The spirit of man goeth upward, and the spirit of the beast that goeth downward to the earth. Right, and Esau don't have no understanding of what's going on. He said that the spirit vanishes and it disappeared. Yeah, thin air. Right, you know. Right, but that's not what he—that's not what Solomon said. Sounds One of the wisest men that ever walked on the earth. He said, "Hey, the spirit of man goeth upward; it goeth back to the Father. But the spirit of beast had come back down. Right. Man, I got some more precepts on it, but what you got? Kind. This is Luke chapter nine. In verse 29. Right. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered, and his raiment was white and glistering. So this is Yahweh Shah right here, you know. He and we in Luke. This is Yahweh Shah. Verse 30. And behold, there talked with him two men, which were Moses and Elias, who appeared in glory, and spake of his and spake of his decease, which he should accomplish at Jerusalem. So if if they, if we really die and our spirit vanish and everything turn to ashes, how would Moses and Elias be able to come and speak to um Yahweh Right. You know, they they spirit would have to be gone. Right. This is gener this is generations after um Moses and Elijah. You know, Moses is one of the he was Yahweh Shah's forefather. Right. You know what I'm saying? So how is you just gonna be say like say um your spirit vanish and that's not that's not the case here. We see all throughout the scriptures, your spirit don't vanish. We even seen where John the Baptist moved in the spirit of Elijah. Right. You know, like, come on now. <laughs> it, 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 that, ain't, that ain't biblical. That right. just ain't biblical. Right. I got um, a few more precepts on it. This is Revelation 6 and 9. It says, and when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God. Right. So he actually saw the souls of them that were slain for the word of God. Then it says... And for the testimony which they held, and they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long? Right? So the souls that died for the testimony of the word of God. 
It says they cry with a loud voice saying, how long, O Lord, holy and true, does thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the face of the earth? Right. It said they died and their souls actually came before the Most High and they asked them, how long is this going to endure where you don't um, recompense um, judgment on them? Right. And you can read Job um, 23 and it tells you um, about how the how the right, how the men plead their cause before the Most High. Right. Same thing with Cain and Abel. When Cain slew his brother, he said, um, I heard the blood and it cried unto me. Yeah, your brother's blood. Right. And I got one more precept. Ecclesiastes 12 and 7. It says, then shall the dust return to the earth as it was. It's like it. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was. And the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. Move. Corner. Keep going. So lucky. Looking for the pen. Oh, here it is, right here. Right, but it, uh, let me read this again. Ecclesiastes 12 and 7. It says, Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. Right? Cut. Right? <laughs> it's finished. Right? You got something you want to bring up? Or you want no, to go back? No, 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 no. Right now, we can All go right. back. Where was I at verse? I'm at verse 4, right? Kind. Right? And our name shall be forgotten in time. Right, our forefathers died a long time ago, but they name's still here. Kind. We're still talking about Moses. Kind. Still talking about Adam. Still talking about Cain and Abel. Still talking about Enoch. Still talking about everybody. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, they sons, the twelve patriarchs. We talking about all of them. The heathens still talking about our forefathers. Right, hey, we still talking about the heathens too. Esau is damn wicked ass people. <laughs> right, Good. they don't have no understanding though. Uh, where was I? At? Four, four. Yeah. And our name shall be forgotten in time, and no man shall have our works in remembrance. All right, so hold on, Con I got a uh, precept. This is Second Ezra, chapter six and verse fifty-seven. And now, O Lord, behold, these heathen which have ever been reputed as nothing have begun to be lords over us and to devour us. Right. And so that's why they that's why they had that that thought, because they seen us and seen how uh, wise and understanding nation we are. They like ain't nobody gonna remember our works, bro. These <laughs> niggas is walking through fire. <laughs> These right. niggas is slaying niggas with, with three hundred men with one sword swipe. Nobody's gonna remember us because they reputed as nothing. All right. They ain't got no works. They ain't got no good works. They ain't, right. they ain't doing nothing. They not walking through fire. They not making fire come down from heaven. They not doing nothing. They just being wicked. Hey, the only thing that's um, recorded of them really is how the Most High used them by discipline. That's it. Right. That's it. <laughs> right. He was Nebuchadnezzar. That was his servant, you know. Right. Put them in captivity. Right. You can go ahead, though. Right. <laughs> man. These, man. Um, it says, And our life shall pass away as the trace of a cloud, and shall be dispersed as a mist that is driven away with the beams of the sun and overcome with the heat thereof. These niggas are scared to die, bro. Yeah. It. These niggas is that scared to die. Right. We can keep going. Verse 5. For our time is a very shadow that passeth away. <laughs> and after our end, there There's is no, no returning. returning. For it is fast sealed so that no man cometh again. Come on, therefore, let us enjoy the good things that are pleasant. Check that out. It said, come on, therefore, and let us enjoy the good things that are pleasant. And let us speedily use the creatures like as in you. And what is that talking about? <clears throat> that's talking about how, um, like as in youth, that's talking about um, kids playing with toys. That's what that's going into. Let's, use, let's play with these creatures and use these creatures like kids play with toys. You know, they got them in zoos, all kinds of stuff. You know, they messing the animals' lives up. The animals <laughs> is even ready for us to come back. Right, tell you that. It's all right. Yeah. They 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 sick of Esau, cause they using them like um, like kids. You're not supposed to just take no lion and cage him up. You're not right. supposed to take a thousand penguins and put them in a cold room. You know, You're not supposed to take no fat tiger and give him a backyard. <laughs> he got the whole world, but you put him in a backyard. That don't make sense just cause you want to look at him. Right, just you know? to Bro, look, when you think about the wickedness of Esau, they're getting money 
off of wild animals that the Most High created by caging them up, right? And you get tourists and people coming and you know, we have paid to get in the zoos, right? Where you going, Lamentation? I'm Jeremiah. Man, Kinda bring something this. now, cause I'm finna get heated. This is Jeremiah chapter 51 and verse 25. Behold, I'm against thee, O destroying mountains, saith the Lord, right. which destroyeth all the earth. And I will stretch out my hand upon thee and roll thee down from the rocks and I will make thee a burnt offering. And that's exactly what they are destroying mountain. They are fish till there's no more fish and they just only fish just to catch the biggest fish. They won't even eat it. Right. They are hunt so much they extinct the animal. Right. Or hunt just so they can have it as a trophy. Yeah, put it up, put it up, put the head up. Won't even eat the meat. Same thing they did to the natives. They just took all the coats of the um, buffalo and let the uh, meat spoil. You know, they are destroying mountain. They just go around destroying the whole earth. They put plastic all in the water. Now we got whales, you know. It's like it. Now we got whales uh, washing up on the shores. That don't even, that don't even make sense. Right. You got yeah, man. Like the brother said, he, he said it, but he didn't really touch on it. I'm going to grab a precept on it. He said, um, basically, something to the effect that the animals are even fed up. God. Right, not only is everybody in the world fed up with Esau and his kingdom and his dominion for this period of time which he's been ruling, but the animals feel it too. Right, cutting down all the forest, you know, messing up all the habitations, right? So we're gonna get into it. This is Sirach 39 and verse 28. It says, there be spirits that are created for vengeance, which in their fury lay on sore strokes. In the time of destruction, they pour out their force and appease the wrath of him that made him, made them, right? And it goes into everything um, that appeases the most high's wrath, right? And I'm gonna jump down to verse to um, verse 30. It says, teeth of wild beasts and scorpions, serpents, and the sword punishing the wicked to destruction. It says, they shall rejoice in his commandment. God. The animals, the beasts of the field, the scorpions, the serpents, right? They all going to rejoice at the commandment. When the Most High say go, the He's Israelite, going. hey, hey, the Israelites going to rejoice and the beast going, they're going to rejoice. They're going to be happy. They're going to be glad to do this. God. Right? Because we've been enduring for a long season, it feel like, man. It says they shall rejoice in his commandment and they shall be ready upon the earth. Check that out. They're going to be ready upon the earth when need is. Tell me when to go. Right? <laughs> it says, and when their time come, they shall not transgress his word. Mm -mm. Right? It says, um, therefore, from the beginning, I was resolved and thought upon these things and have left them in writing. Check that out. God, they ain't going to transgress his word. Right? <laughs> Once he say go, they going after it. They're like, yo, I'm going straight for that man that put me in here. Right. I see him. I'm going straight for him. Right. It ain't no more darts now. Mm -mm. It ain't no more sleeping medicines. It ain't no more guns. It ain't Ooh, none of that. Giving them food, raw steak, and they got pills in it to make them go to sleep. Tranquilizer. Nah, he's smacking him and his family. What the hell is you doing capturing the bear and putting it in a cage? And then you got a, you got them in the circus, and you got the elephants in there. You know the elephants, they got a, a strong memory. They yeah. don't forget anything. They don't forget nothing, right? So <laughs> you're going to have to deal with that. The elephant knocking over your house. You no. thought everything was safe. Imagine the lion. Right. The lion, he's the um king of the jungle. He got the whole... African planes, everything. Right. But you bring them to Tulsa, and you give them a little, 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 little thing of land, and it's a deep little hill. Right. It's finished. When the lion get out, he tearing everybody up. Right. It's done. You're gonna have gorillas and monkeys walking around. <laughs> hey, what was that? Um, that one um, a monkey movie. Um, Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Yep. And you got Caesar, you I know, love. talking and yeah. shit. No. These, right? <laughs> These animals, they un they going to understand. They're going to be given that spirit again, man. Make a covenant with each other. Right. It's going to be finished, man. And everybody going to be on one accord, man. Really? Including the Israelites. Right? Going to get dominion back. Right. The Israelites that's doing what they're supposed to be doing to the best of their ability. God. Right. But the other Jakes, man, y'all going to, it's going to be bad on y'all too. Right. Ain't going to be no you trying to feed the elephant peanuts. Nah. And you're trying to appease his wrath. Like, they're not going to transgress his command. Exactly. That's he fire, saying, You bro. gone, you gone. Right. Let me get back to it, man. We can talk about this all day. This is... Really? Right? Beautiful conversations. Where are we at? Verse... Um, seven. Seven. It says, Let us fill ourselves with costly wine and ointments, 
and let no flower of the spring pass by us. You see, the thing, why they said let us um, fill ourselves with costly um, wine and ointments, they, they want to be a high people, but if we're talking about Esau, they're not a high people. They used to crawl on their hands and uh, feet. You know, they used to stink so bad. Y'all know that, you know that song, um, uh, Ashes. At, yeah, 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 that pedal song, Pocket whatever. Full of Pocket something. full of posies. Right, because they stunk, huh? They used to put the uh, flyer of the posies under their thing because it stunk so bad. And they, you know, put it up here and all kinds of stuff. They just stunk, you know, but... But now they trying to be the, the top people. Let us right, fill ourselves with costly wine. Look pure and shit. Yeah. Nigga just learned how to comb his hair. <laughs> just learn how to take a bath. Right. The hell? Yeah. Do you want me to keep reading? Come on. Um, it's at verse 8. It says, let us crown ourselves with rosebuds before they be withered. Yeah. You know, let us crown ourselves. You know, when the rosebud is all red and it's nice and it's, ooh, you know what I'm saying? It's royalty. Let us crown ourselves with that before it wither, before it go away. Because they got a short time. They know it's going to wither away. Right. <laughs> That's going to come to a halt. They right. kingdom is going to come to a stop. Go ahead. Verse 9. Let none of us go without his part of our, how you say that word? Voluptuousness. Voluptuousness. Kind. It says, let us leave tokens of our joyfulness in every place. For this is our portion and our lot is this. Hey, voluptuousness. Let me get the let me get the pre the concrete now. I was gonna say the precept. Let me Google it real quick. I remember you telling me about it when we first read this chapter, but I forget. Kind. Voluptuousness. 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 This is a fat word. Bear with me, Israel. All right, I'll read this verse again. It says, "Let none of us go without his part, um, without his part of our voluptuousness." Let us leave tokens of our joyfulness in every place, for this is our portion, and our lot is this. Let's get back. I can kind of understand what it's saying, but I want to see what Google. Kind. It says, a suggestion, I mean, yeah, suggestion, sensual pleasure by fullness of beauty of form, full of delight or pleasure to the senses, conductive to arising from senses or sensual grat gratifications. Given to or spent in enjoyment of luxury, pleasure, or sensual gratifications. So, kind. They said, um, let none of us go without his part of our voluptuousness. Let us all enjoy this. We often enjoy this right now. And then what else does it say? It says, let us leave tokens of our joyfulness. What is their joyfulness? Putting people in captivity, taking over land. And what's them tokens? Them tokens is signs. They put up uh, big concrete uh, statues of themselves. Look at this man. It's George Washington. I got a fat concrete idol of George Washington. Right. And his joyfulness, what was his joyfulness? You know, coming over and conquering America. That's his joyfulness, you know? That's what that's going into. Wherever they go, they got a big old statue or they name somewhere, they put their name on something. Like, yeah, this is our token of our joyfulness. We conquered this place. This is what we did. We was happy when we did it, when we did it. You know what I'm saying? Right. Can I grab some? Yeah, I'll grab a quick reset. Psalms 49, so I can read it there. Psalms 49, and what is it? 11. It says there, it's like, yeah, their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever, and their dwelling places to all generations. They call their lands after their own names. Con, and that's what that's going into. That's, that's their tokens. That's them signs. They put little signs everywhere. Hey, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, they're all that, them is just Greek gods. And it's just signs, you know? And it was it was happy when they did that. And it says, for this is our portion, and our lot is this. I mean, and that's, that's what they lot was. And they understand what they lot is, man. They lot is only being, um, having dominion for a short time. All right. right, so they trying to enjoy it while they do got that dominion. All right, that's why we put out the, Revela uh, the scripture in Revelation um, 12 and 12, I believe, and Job 20 and 5, right? And I'll uh, keep reading. Are we at verse 10? Uh, yeah. It says, let us oppress the poor righteous man. And who is that poor righteous man? That's us. Get Revelations 3. Where are you at? You already there? 2 and 9. 2 and 9. Come. This is Revelations chapter 2 and verse 9. I know thy works and tribulation and okay. poverty. Poor. But thou art rich. rich. Right? And we rich because the Most High gave us, um, and he chose us. Come and he on. gave us the law, statutes, and commandments. And we know what the law, statutes, and commandments is for us. It's our righteousness 
our righteousness pursuant to Deuteronomy 6 and 25. God, we right? rich in spirit. Right. Right. So it says, let us, uh, let us oppress the poor righteous man. Let us not spare the widow, nor reverence the ancient gray hairs of the age. Right. And you can read about that in the curses, man. I was just going to grab that. Right. Yeah, this is Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 50. I'm going to start at 49. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far from the end of the earth as swift as the eagle flieth, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand, a nation of fierce countenance, which shall not regard the person of the old, nor show favor to the young. And that's exactly what they're saying right here, you know? They don't regard the widow. They don't regard that her husband is dead. They don't regard, they don't show um, reverence to the aged, you know? They don't care about that. They don't care about the young man either. They just don't. They're just going to take us for a spoil. You can keep going if you ain't got nothing on it. Yeah, it's all good. Um, verse 11. It says, let our strength be the law of justice. Check that out. It's a precept in Maccabees. I'm going to grab this. All right, Colin. Maccabees. All right, let me read that again. It says, let our strength be the law of justice. All right. Now let's let's elaborate on that law of justice a little bit. This is First Maccabees, chapter eight, verse fifteen. It says, "Moreover, how they had made for themselves a senate house, wherein three hundred and twenty men sat in council daily, consulting always for the people, to the end that they might be well ordered." Right. So the Romans actually set up a senate house, right, to try and um, set up laws and delegate. Um, and give judgment on people who, you know, transgress the laws that they set up, right? They tried to set up um, precise um, regulations, like I said, and they try and delegate um, wrong from right, but we know what's wrong from right already. God. They got their laws, and they try and um, give justice according to the laws they created. That's not justice. That's not justice. The wicked shall be wickedly, and none of the, the wicked, wicked shall understand. understand. They don't know what justice is. Right? So. so and, and, and they go on their own laws. Yeah. Right? And the only reason why their laws even make sense sometimes is because they're out of the Bible. Right? But they don't even um, go about judgment correctly. Mm -hmm. Right? Underneath the table, you got, you know, the judge taking a bribe. Right? Yeah. Persecuting the poor righteous man. Right? So, you know, this system, they got to be destroyed. I got a precept. This is Zechariah chapter 11 and verse 5. Whose possessors slay them and hold themselves not guilty. And they that sell them say, blessed be the Lord, for I am rich. And their own shepherds pity them. So, you know, it says, whose possessors slay them and hold themselves not guilty. And that's not justice. Right. That's not justice. That's not right. That's not correct. Because that's what they do. Like he said. The system is corrupt. They they had come out here and slay you, kill you. They'll shoot you twelve times in the face and then fifteen times in your body and still handcuff you. <laughs> they 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 still handcuff you. Right. And then they'd be like, "Well, I thought I, I thought he, I thought I seen a gun." Right. It ain't nothing in there that resembles a gun. He said, "I fear for my life." Yeah, he can be driving the, the invisible in what is it? A oh, SpongeBob the invisible bill. He can be driving the invisible bill. Right. You can see it ain't no gun in there. Right. He letting them go. Right. It's just not just a clip. Yeah. Right. You want me to keep reading? Come. Uh, Wisdom of Solomon chapter two verse twelve. Twelve. It says, "Therefore, let us lie and wait for the righteous, because he is not for our turn." All right. Hold on. So, so, like, so check this out. The scripture, he, even they lie in wait for us. Right. Everybody want us on, in rulership. Right. I think I know what you finna grab. Yeah, you do. Kind of grab that real quick. Kind of. I'm finna paraphrase it off the dome. Right, right. <laughs> sometimes, it, sometimes it be busting like that too, though. Nah, it wasn't let's, gonna bust. Let's grab it. 10 and, uh, what is it? 10 and 7, I believe. Let me see. Uh, 8. Um, Psalms 10 and 8, it says, He sitteth in the lurking places of the villages, and the secret places doth he murder the innocent. His eyes are privately set against the poor. Right. right? I'm going to keep reading. It says, He lieth and wait secretly as a lion in his den. He lieth and wait to catch the poor. He doth catch the poor. 
when he draweth him into his net. He croucheth and humbleth himself that the poor may fall by his strong ones, man. And that, that, man, if you can't see that, that being your enemies here in America, man, these other nations, primarily your arch enemy, the e Edomites, man, then you got a problem, man. Snaming. Right? Because they sitting and they hiding in the secret places of the villages, man. Waiting to slay the righteous. Right? And he praying like a lion on the, on, on the most high's hidden ones, on the ones that believe, man. God. That's what he do, man. If you don't think that they watching your every move, Man, you're sadly mistaken. You don't understand how crafty and cunning the, um, Esau is, man. Right? It's not just black and white. Right? He got a little spots of blue. Got a little spots of, you know, different colors in there, Nigga man. got red in on the most. <laughs> right? He's showing all his colors, man. All of the different shades of wickedness, man, they gonna come to light, man. God. Right? And you gotta understand that um, your enemy is trying to do everything in his power to keep us in sin and at the bottom. God. It right? said, so like, go ahead. It said right here, it says, and he is clean contrary to our doing. We're clean contrary to them. Complete opposites. Yeah. It don't mix. Right. You know, what fellowship does darkness have with light? Right. It don't. Right. It's like you're trying to mix oil, you know, with a little water. It ain't going to work. Right. Come on. Kind. It says he upbraided us with our offending the law. He upbraided us with our offending the law, man. Check that out. Hey, and what do we always say? We always go and pull Revelations uh, 13, 10. But the precept to that is in Exodus, you know? He that selleth, he that uh, stilleth a man. And selleth him. Kind. And he still be found in the land, shall surely be put to death. Kind. And that's us upbraiding him with offending that law. Right. He's offending the law. Right. Him being uh, a fag. LGBTQ, whatever it's called, him doing that. He's offending the law. We, we cut him <laughs> every time with it. Still gonna make me mad. <laughs> so like you. Um, um kind, I keep going. All right. Upbraided us uh, with our offending the law and objected to our infamy with transgressions <laughs> of our education. And what is that talking about? That's because they going in, um, in schools. Now they taking out slavery. Hush. They taking out, um, um, slavery out of um, the education system. They took the Bible out of the education system a while back. They took they um they starting to they starting to teach something called the um the the gay BCs. What is that? What is that? You know this ain't got nothing to do with um the scriptures. Nothing biblical. But it says an objective to our infamy, the transgressions of our education. Their education is is finished. It's, it's no education in there. Right. You got a precept? No. Nah. Kind. Verse 13, it says, He professeth to have the knowledge of God. S he professeth what? He professeth to have the knowledge of God. Check that out. And he calleth himself the child of the Lord. And he calleth himself the child of the Lord, man. And there's so many precepts that's rolling through my head right now, man. Esau walking around and calling himself the child of the Lord. Man, on a larger scale, you see this today. You got the Jewish man in our land calling himself the children of God, God's chosen people. Done. Right? And we're going to go into it a little bit, man. Right? Um, let's see, man. Right? They got that Cain spirit. <laughs> Definitely. Man, where, where is that? Um, so, like, it's a couple of them. I think I'm getting it mixed up. You got something? Kind. Just like the brother was saying, um... It's something in Obadiah I know of that is talking about, you know, he um, maketh his nest of stars and he professes to be God, you know, that's that's how Esau moved. But on another level, this uh, scripture is twofold because this is also talking about us. It says he professes to have the knowledge of God and he called himself the child of God. He was made to reprove our thoughts. We were made to reprove his thoughts because we are the children of God and they don't like that. They don't like when we say we are the children of God. None of that, none of that hit their spirit. Right. You know? It's all too, it's 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 all dope, it's meanings behind this stuff. Double meanings, it's everything, you know. It says, um, you still getting your preach a lot? Kind. Kind, kind. I'm gonna read it again then. Verse 13. He professes to have the knowledge of God and he calls himself the child of the Lord. He was he was made to reprove our thoughts. And we were made to reprove his thoughts, like I just said. We were made to cut him up with scriptures. In Jeremiah, it says, um, the words in our mouth are going to be as fire, 
and, and them people would. And we're going to burn them to stubble. We're going to chop them up. Every time they hear, they're going to go into slavery. They inside burning. They, <laughs> uh, oh. Gnashing of the teeth, you know? Right. I'm like, because that truth hurt, man. That shit hurt. <laughs> the truth hurt. Right? Whoever said that um, words don't hurt. Definitely was a fool, man. They lied. Definitely got that from me. So, so. Nah, I don't hurt. Stick the stone, they break my bones. The words never hurt me. Man, man, I gotta, man, this precept in Syrac, man, I tell you that words break up the bones. <laughs> right? It'll break you down, man. I tell you in Hebrews 4 and 12, man, that it'll slice you a slender. Right? This is Syrac 28 and 17. It says, The stroke of the whip maketh marks in the flesh. Right, the whip will put marks in your flesh, man. It says, but the stroke of the tongue breaketh the bones. <laughs> right? So who am I believe? The uh, might say it or the Bible, the man. The Bible. Right? Because the Bible, man, it cuts you in half, man. And this I don't even believe we can come back. Right? <laughs> man, let me read this. This is first John 3 and 10. It says, And this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Mm. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God. If you don't do righteousness, you're not of God. It says, neither he that loveth not his brother. Mm. Right? And we know Esau don't love his brother. Nah, he proved it plenty of times. Right? We know Cain don't love his brother. Perpetual hatred. Right? And we know who <laughs> Cain is, man. We know who got that Cain spirit. God. We know what that's talking about in Genesis 4. We know it's talking about Jacob and Esau, man. Through the precepts, you get that understanding. Verse 11, for this is the message that ye have heard from the beginning that we should love one another, right? Check this out. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, mm. right? A, a child of the devil God. and slew his brother and wherefore slew he him because his own works were evil and his brother's righteous, right? And that's the same thing going on now. He said, they are clean contrary to us. God. They know that we clean. They know that we perfect. They know that we the apple of the most high's eye. God. Right, and they trying to kill us because we doing what's, you know. The apple of Satan's eye. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, uh, man, where was we at? Verse 15. I got to read that. I got to read 13 again, so like it. It's kind of it. says, he professeth to have the knowledge of God. That's from... <laughs> And he calleth himself the child of the Lord, man. Man, that is crazy. Does he really do that, man? That is cr Look at the scriptures talking, though. Verse 14. He was made to, re to reprove our thoughts. Because Esau is the sword. He was made to reprove our thoughts. Hey, and we also was made to reprove them. We was made to get everybody in order. We was made to be lords over them. Verse 15, he is grievous unto us even to behold, for his life is not like others, other men's. His ways are of another fashion. Hey, hey, and that's going into, um, God. that's God. going into, um, us keeping these law, statutes, and commandments, you know, because every nation wasn't given these law, statutes, and commandments. Esau is like, they sitting there saying his ways is of another fashion. You know, Esau, they walking around naked. But we we wearing fringes covering ourselves. Our women wear dresses. But Esau over here just butt naked. You know? I got a fire preset. Go ahead. All right, classic. Genesis 25, verse 23. It says, And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, <laughs> and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels, and the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. Cut cold, straight up and down, <laughs> just like cold. You can't do nothing like that. Man. Can't do nothing with it. Can't do nothing with it. So like, verse sixteen. Right. It says, "We are esteemed of him as counterfeits." Man, and they know it. He abstaineth from our ways as from filthiness. Right. He pronounces the end of the just to be blessed and maketh his boast that God is his father. And right. that's exactly what we do. Right. Let me grab this precept of song. <laughs> that man. is exactly what we do, man. You saw no, man. If you, if you think that they're your friends, man, it's going to be tough for you, man. You're done for. Right? <laughs> man, you don't let trust in his enemies. Hey, this is Psalms 44 and verse 8. It says, And God, we boast all the day long. And praise thy name forever, Salah. God. Check that out. 
That's what that's going into. We make our boast of that God is our father. Right. You know? That he's our God and none else. None else. Right. And let's see, let's see, let's see if they like that. Verse 17, let us see if his words be true. <laughs> and let us prove what shall happen in the end of him. Hey, and in the end of him, it said that um that the older, the elder would serve the younger. No, let me grab this precept in, in um second Ezra six. Classic precept. You got something real quick? Con, con, con. It says, um, it says, let us see if his words be true. Let us prove what shall happen in the end of him. So basically, they're saying, let us see if his words be true. And if you don't think they're taking account of your words, they are. This is John 15 and 20. Remember the word I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will pers they will also persecute you. And that's what that's going into. They're going to prove us. They're going to figure out where we at. They're going to prove us. They're going to prove us and our words. You know, it says, if they have kept my sayings, they will keep yours also. Mm. And that's what that's going into. Let me read that again. It says, let us see if his words be true. They keeping our sayings right now. As soon as we put this video out, they're going to keep this saying. They're going to mark that down. Right. They're going to see what he's talking about. Hey, you got a lot of brothers who say they're going to die for the most high. They're yeah. going to see if that's true. Because, you know, a lot of jakes out here, they ready. You know, they already folding up. That's, Let's put it like that. Damn. That's exactly what that's going into. That That's why it says, and let us prove what shall happen in the end of him. Let's see if that's going to happen. You know, go ahead, it's a lot. Right, right. This is Second Ezra 6 and 9. It says, for Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that follow it. God. Right, check that out. All know? praises. And what's going to happen at the end of him? Ain't no end of us. On um, verse 18, for if the just man be the son of God. <laughs> hey. For if the just man be the son of God, he will help him and deliver him from the hand of his enemies. Hey. Right, and hey, look, look, the enemies know this for a fact, right? I've been reading Judith um, lately again, and you got, um, what is it, a core, I think uh, the Ammonite, and he knew that if we didn't have any sin, then the Most High would fight our battles and we'll overthrow anybody. But if we was found in sin and we was being wicked, right, the opposite of just, then we would be overtaken in the wars, overtaken in the battles, man. So the enemies know. You got something? Kind. And, and they, that's how you know they got the spirit of Satan. This is Matthew 4 and 5. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and setteth him on a, on a pinnacle of the temple and saith unto him, If thou be the son of God, cast thyself down. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. Yah shall say unto him, It is written again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Right. So that's how you know they're moving in that same spirit. You know, it said... um. It says, for if the just man be the son of God, he will help him and deliver him from the hands of his enemies. Right. You know, they just want to they just want to tempt the most high. Verse 19, it says, let us examine him with despitefulness and torture that we may know his meekness and prove his patience. Right. And, and, and through and through the spirit, Esau know what's going on, but they really don't know what's going on. All they are is just a, a tool for the most high. Right. A tool for us. A tool for us to be better. An yeah. obstacle that we got to overcome to be to get to our greatness, man. Right. That's all Esau is used for. It's a little chastised. Right, to show the most high's power. <laughs> it's a little chastised. Right. I got a precept. This is 2 Maccabees chapter 6 and verse 27. Wherefore now, manfully changing this life, I will show myself such an one as mine age requireth, and leave a notable example to such as be young to die willingly and courageously for the honorable and holy. For the honorable and holy laws. And when he said these words, immediately he went to the torture. And that's exactly what this is going into. It says, um, let us examine him with despitefulness and torture, that we may know his meekness and prove his patience. That we may know his faith. Basically, we're going to figure out where your faith is. See where your patience is, in that. patience is at. And in Maccabees, we just read, he was ready to die for the laws. Next thing you know, he went to the torture. Right. You know? My forefathers went hard. But, um, hard, where we at? 20. It says, Let us condemn him with a shameful death, for by his own saying he shall be respected. Verse 21 Such things they did imagine and were deceived, for their own wickedness have blinded them. Kind. They don't even know what's going on. Their own wickedness have blinded them. And back at verse 20, it says, Let us condemn him with a shameful death, for by his own saying 
he will he shall be respected. And that shameful death is just um, you know, some brothers gonna have to get shot. Some brothers gonna have to get put to death in front of many people, you know. But by our own saying, it's gonna be for our good. You know? We're gonna be respected. You die for the laws, you're gonna be respected. You die for the most high, you're gonna be respected. And that's just how it is. We are gonna be respected. You know, but they think they're gonna get some kind of way out of it by saying, let us shame his death of some some weird. You know, it ain't nah. Uh, where we at? Verse 22 or 21? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which one? 21. 21. It says, such things they did imagine and were deceived. Hey, it's a lot. Such things did the, did the ungodly imagine and were deceived. The most high got these men in derision. They deceiving them own selves. They own selves. But go ahead. It says, for their own wickedness have blinded them. That's self-explanatory. Go ahead. All right. It says, as for the mysteries of God, they knew them not. Neither hoped they for the wages of righteousness, nor discerned a reward for their blameless souls. Mm. That's deep. Right? That hey, that um that made me think of the blind leading the blind. And they both falling into a ditch. God. It says they 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 don't even um they don't understand the mystery, the mysteries of God. They um they knew them not. Neither hope they for the wages of righteousness, right? And, and Jacob always um, wanted the wages for righteousness. We always wanted the fruit um, and getting blessed for doing the right thing. That's not what Esau wanted, right? Even from the beginning with Cain and Abel, he wanted the fruit from the wicked one. That's what he wanted. We didn't want that though. It says, nor discern a reward for blameless souls. Right, and we we actually throw up these kind of prayers that we can be um, found. Get don't make me do it. Get right. We actually um, throw up certain prayers, like it tell you in Luke, um, that we pray that we are counted worthy in the sight of the Most High, God. that we found blameless, without spot and without blemish, so that we can receive a reward according to that. Verse twenty three. It says, "For God created man to be immortal." And made him to be an image of his own eternity. Check that out. Time is busting. Right? Man, it tells you in 2nd Ezra that it was a grain of um, evil sown in Adam. Right? But for the sake of time, I'm going to keep going. About an hour in. Uh, I'm going to read that again. For God created man to be immortal and made him to be an image of his own eternity. Nevertheless, through envy of the devil came death into the world and that it's like, yeah, and they that do hold of his side do find it. Hey, scriptures say all they that hate me love, love death. death. All right. So, <laughs> you just know, like that. Huh? <laughs> Pick your poison, I guess. You right. know what I mean? <laughs> what you want to do? Yeah. And yeah. he said, I said before you this day, death. Life, yeah. Yeah, life and death. One of them. <laughs> um, man. Um, all right, I'm going to read Second Ezra's. Chapter 7 and verse 10, it says, And I said, It is so, Lord. Then said he unto me, Even so also is Israel's portion, because for their sakes I made the world. And when Adam transgressed my statutes, then, then was decreed that now is done. Then were the interests of this world made narrow, full of sorrow and travail. They are but few and evil, full of perils. And very painful for the entrances of the elder world were wide and sure and brought immortal fruit right but um when um adam transgressed it made thought that you know because i tell you in matthew 7 and 13 if you don't mind grabbing that for me real quick matthew 7 and 13 right and i'll touch on this scripture a little bit all right i'm not gonna go too deep i'm gonna mess around and do a whole lesson over this so for the sake of time, I'll, you know, keep it brief. This is Matthew chapter 17. So lock it. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 13. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. He said it's a straight gate, right? And then he said it's a wide gate that leadeth to death and destruction. It's easy to go into this gate. It's a lot of space and opportunity. Wide and broad. Wide <laughs> and broad. But before, in the elder times, where Adam and Eve... He said it was vice versa. Uh -huh. It was hard for you to go down that road, right, to death and destruction. He said the entrances of immortality, that road was broad. That was the broad gate. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. right? But when Adam transgressed like that, them two places switched. Yep. Right. Verse 14, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. So right. like he just said, it's flip-flop now. Right. Few there be that find that gate. Time. Right. But I'm going to read this again, uh, 7 and 13. Well, I'm going to start at 11. It says, because for their sakes I made the world. Right. He made the world for us. And when Adam transgressed my statutes, then was decreed that now is done. Right. And it's saying that basically them two things would be, um, you know, vice versa. It says um, verse 12. Then were the interests of this world made narrow, full of sorrow and travail. They are but few and evil, full of pearls and very painful. Check this out. For the interests of the elder world were wide and sure and brought immortal fruit. They're wide and short, right? Um, but I'm going to read one more precept um, to touch on it, and then we'll wrap it up. Um, second Ezra 4 and 30. It says, For the grain of evil seed had been sown in the heart of Adam from the beginning, and how much ungodliness had been brought up unto this time, and how much shall it yet bring forth until the time of threshing come? Right? So it was actually a seed of evil. A grain of a grain, what does it say? It's like a grain of evil seed had been sown in the heart of Adam from the beginning. Damn, size of rice. <laughs> and, and think about how much wickedness and chaos that brought. Right? That's all it takes. Right? Abstain from all manners of wickedness. Right, man. <laughs> yeah, that's a gateway drug. <laughs> right. Oh, you said abstain from all appearance of wickedness. Yeah, like all a appearance of evil, man, according to the Bible, man. Yeah. Man. What do you want to um, close out with? Um, whatever you have. Sarek? Yeah, we close out with Sarek. Now we need to start opening up with that Deuteronomy game. Yeah. Fire. We jumped into it today. Sarek, what? All right. And Before this lesson was more like we just like talking it out. You know, it wasn't like a particular. Wasn't trying to get too deep or nothing. Right. You know. Right. Even if we didn't record it, we probably would have still had this conversation. <laughs> you know, so. God. Yeah, this is just off the spirit. Right. <laughs> this is off the spirit. You know what I'm saying? Most of our videos would be off the spirit, but we'd be a little bit more in tune. But this one is more like a little conversation kind of type thing. Right. But this is Sirach chapter 43 and verse 30. When you glorify the Lord, exalt him as much as you can, for even yet will he far exceed. And when you exalt him, put forth all your strength and be not weary, for you can, can never, never go far enough. enough. Wow. So kind of with that. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to the Most High God, Yahweh, by Shimon, Mashiach, Yahweh, Shah, and Shalom, Barak. Uh, Shalom.